So this is going to be another video about consciousness, and just to make it a little bit more relevant, I'm going to post it as a response to a video that Conference Report just made um, about the hard problem of consciousness. It was actually a response to uh, to Jeff Cosmo, uh, Cosmo with a K, who uh, I just posted a video response to. So it's that conversation, uh, but I should. I should preface my entry into this, uh, or re-entry into this conversation by saying that uh, I spent the last eight or nine hours reading uh, German Idealist Philosophy, uh, mostly Schelling. Uh, I read Fichte earlier, but uh, in Kant before that, just, you know, uh, excerpts from the, uh, the preface to the Critique of Pure Reason and Fichte's science of knowledge and uh, Schelling's idea, ideas for a philosophy of nature, which was really fantastic. And I might, hmm, I might actually read just a paragraph, uh, the very last paragraph of uh, of this essay by by Schelling, ideas for a philosophy of nature. Nature should be mind made visible, mind the invisible nature. Here then is the absolute identity of mind in us and nature outside us, the problem of the possibility of a nature external to us must be resolved. The final goal of our further research is, therefore, this idea of nature. If we succeed in attaining this, we can also be certain to have dealt satisfactorily with that problem. These are the main problems whose solution is to be the purpose of this essay. But this essay does not begin from above with the establishment of metaphysical principles but from below with experimental findings and the testing of previous systems. Only when I have reached the goal which I have set myself will it be possible for me to retrace in reverse the course which was and which has been run. Uh, so, you know, Schelling, he's an idealist, right? So when he's going to talk about the physical, he's going to preface it by saying, well, the physical is something I'm conscious of. It's not the full extent of that uh, which I'm conscious of, however. And so as a philosopher, when trying to account for consciousness as a natural occurrence, of course, uh, an idealist like Schelling is forced to say that, well, um, if I were to pay attention only to the physical, I'd be bracketing most of my actual experience. And so if, if I wanted to try to account for that experience, if I wanted to try to scientifically uh, investigate my own conscious experience, um, then I would have to... Um, begin with myself with I, and it's a word, right, but it's, it's a unique word, it's the only, the only word which only I can say of myself. You can't say I for me. I can't say I for you. We can only call ourselves by I. And for a philosopher trying to understand understanding, trying to attain Reason, which is a, it's it's a, an activity of free thinking. Which is not other than an activity of, free willing, and uh, and feeling, for Schelling, and you know any idealist or German idealist especially, thinking, feeling, and willing form a unity, in consciousness. Nature is is also part of the unity that consciousness forms with itself. And so when we talk about the physical, and we try to define the word physical, 
we could say that it is it is nature made visible, uh, nature measured, nature weighed and tried and tested. But there's more to the universe than just uh, a visible, measurable uh, exterior world. There's also an invisible, uh, intentional, experiential world with values and and will and and ideas, thinking. Matter uh, has always been, at least. Uh, implicitly intelligent, or at least uh, if, if we are to remain truly philosophical in, in the sense that, you know, we could say Kant actually intended, where we only say things, we only claim knowledge of what we have experienced. If that is to be the definition of science, which is not a science merely of the physical, but also of the mental. <clears throat> you know, my critique of, of a naturalistic attempt to account for consciousness is only that you know, any account it's going to give of consciousness in terms of an external measurable world is from the very beginning to have uh, left out the activity of the observing scientist. Uh, somehow in our accounting of nature we have to also account for nature's capacity uh, to cognize itself, uh, nature's capacity to know itself, and to study itself, and to grow and develop in the direction of truth. <clears throat> if that is possible, science is possible, then nature is, is a logically ordered system. That's a, that's a significant fact, which science has discovered, but which religion has been claiming through some sort of a, a metanoic or a, some sort of a revealed uh, position. You know, perhaps it was only truly experienced by the prophets who, who founded, whether intentionally or unintentionally or something in between these religions. Uh, maybe you know, they were the only ones to experience God, and after that it all became dogma. Uh, but I think you know, what we are called to do today, in our age, as, as you know, democratic individual citizens of nation states, but really the nation states collapsed. We're, we're global citizens now, whether we like it or not. I mean, it's, it's not uh, written on paper, but what is today? <clears throat> so when, you know, when we're dealing with consciousness, we want to talk about the physical, but we also have to talk about something that does indeed transcend the measuring in instruments. That there, there is a, a a trans sensor knowledge that we can have, and it's called intuition. Uh, we do have possession of certain ideas and concepts uh, that we can inwardly uh, manipulate, that we can think by ourselves independently of any outward determination. So we have access to this pure possibility. And one of the possibilities we're capable of thinking is that all of that thinking is reducible to the computational processes of the brain, be they electromagnetic or quantum or whatever, it doesn't matter. It'd be quantitative, right? <clears throat> it would be mathematically ordered, which is a significant fact. But I think the hard problem of consciousness is that I am thinking. And as a thinking being, I am not my brain. I, I am exactly not my brain. Uh, I am the possibility determining my brain. A sort of necessary freedom 